We are about two months in to the Zexal era of Exceed Summoning being introduced into Duel Links. This is the current best deck of Duel Links. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at him. Let's go. That deck, like it or not, it's up to Konami to do something about it. That deck is Christron's Tier 1. You could look at the representation. This is just the last two weeks of tournaments, almost doubling Car Curry. This deck is everywhere in competitive events. It's going to dominate the Casey Cup, if not already. Here is a breakdown of the deck. You could play it in two different ways. You could play it with Mythic Depths. You could play it with level duplication. Both are good ways. Mythic Depths will lose to Cosmic Cyclone. It won't lose, you just lose the Sea Stealth Attack part of the deck. You just lose a big chunk of the deck to a Cosmic Cyclone, where level duplication, you'll have more options for more plays if they have a Cosmic Cyclone. You also have more Lance and more Cosmic Cyclone to counter their back row. So whatever play style or whatever cards you have access to, this will be the ideal way to play. This is the breakdown, this is automated. Here's a deck list from Gift on how to play level duplication. I will be showcasing the Mythic Depths version. He's playing with two impacts as the deck is more susceptible to a Cockatus than the Mythic Depths version. But if you want, you could still play impact and a Rion, whatever you want. Boom, now. This deck type is the best deck. I'm not saying to 100% play it like this as being the best deck, but if we look on the Christron tier list, we could see, if we look at just the breakdown, majority of them are playing the Sea Stealth Attack at one, if they are playing it. Very few are playing it at three, only 3%, but it did win a recent meta weekly being played at three, so I really wanted to test it out. Otherwise, you could try it something like this. Here's a negative one example that did well in a recent MCS. He even snuck in a inverse universe, very spicy. He's also got an entry. So let's hop into it. Another thing of note is that if you're missing any amount of cards here, the deck might still be your best deck to play. You could be missing random sulfoneers missing undines now a good replacement for wielder is anything that discards if you could discard your this fern that's good i've seen some people play tricky tricky is a good card you could discard other cards with you want to discard your christrons even machina fortress is good so you let me know your favorite card to discard with if you don't have a wielder because the wielder is kind of like a discard as you special summon it alongside your smiger or your this fern then you synchro which puts them in the grave so they can activate their effect in the grave instead of going card by card in a long-winded review because it's going to go way over your head let me just show you some plays and what you should focus on so going right into that what is this right here one of your best openers if you go first is you're going to want a Citri on the field, a level three in the graveyard, a banished monster, and an impact. I'll tell you how to set this up. Well, first, why do you want something like this? Basically, what this will do is the impact can be activated on your opponent's turn or your turn to summon a banished monster on the field. That is protection and future plays, so that's very good. Then once the impact is in your graveyard, you could banish it to negate any card effect that targets any of your Christrons. So after summoning the monster, usually in their end phase, you're going to then have the impact to banish to protect your newly summoned monster to make some plays. Also when activating impact, it's gonna set your opponent's cockatiss to zero defense permanently. That is insane. I will tell you later how to deal with the Cockatus if you lose your impact and they summon it after. Also, with the Citri on the field, with a level 3 in the graveyard, like a Scrap Recycler, any level 3 works. Anytime during your opponent's main phase or battle phase, you could summon the Scrap Recycler or a level 3, and then it will banish, banish to make an Amatrix. Amatrix is nuts, it is super, super protective. Ideally, you're going to use this in their battle phase, not in their main phase, so that when they attack into you and you summon this, 
This will put all special summon monsters your opponent controls to defense. That is great. That's super protective. Then if this is destroyed by battle or card effect, including your own card effects, it will activate in the grave to summon a Kristron in the grave, which you will usually maybe summon a Sulfonir from the graveyard, and that's even more protection. Normally, you will be in a situation like this after you go first, they go, you have Amatrix, and it's possibly their end phase. You will possibly be using the impact to summon a Citri or a Smiger on the field. What you're going to be focusing on on your second turn, ideally you want a one turn kill. This deck could very easily one turn kill, that's why it's so powerful. But it's also very good at opening up the field. So if you impact a Citri in their end phase, you could then make a Black Rose Dragon. So this deckless example, he's not playing Black Rose, but here is a Black Rose example. Black Rose Dragon, wipe the field. But even here, you could summon a Gungnir instead to discard two to pop two cards on the field. So that's another good option. Very interesting. If you don't have the Citri or the Impact, the Sulfonir, you could easily summon it on the field, destroy itself or destroy the Amatrix, then you could summon a Citri, then you can Black Rose Dragon or Gungnir. I've not really seen Gungnir. This is someone else's deck we're using this example of. Get Black Rose in on big fields. Now, Quarion is great if you are dealing with a deck that has a monster that is indestructible or multiple monsters and even monsters in the graveyard that you want to banish. Quarion is insane. It's going to require two tuners and a non-tuner to make. So let's run down the four main ways you could make a Quarion. You really want to always have this in mind when you're making your Quarion. Way one is gonna be a level five non-tuner plus two level two tuners. Just like that, put them to the grave. You make a Quarion to banish three monsters on the field and or in the graveyard. Let's go to way number two. Way number two. With a level four non-tuner as we're going down, you're going to use level four plus a level three plus a level two. You make the Quarion, very easy to make it this way. The Rosenix could pop an Amatrix or a Sulfonir on the field, and that could usually get both the Rion and Citri on the field to then make the Quarion. Way three with the level three non-tuner. We got this Thisvern for an example. Rion, which could be summonal from the deck with the effect of the Thisvern. Thisvern could pop the Umi, summon the Rion. Then if you have a Wielder in the hand, or if you haven't performed your normal summon yet, you have the other level three, then you can make the Quarion. Way number four. This could be a bit complicated. The Coral Dragon, such an insane card, very easily summonable. It is a tuner itself. We're gonna be talking about a level one non-tuner, and that's gonna be with the Rosenix effect in the grave. So normally the Coral Dragon could discard the Rosenix, pop a card in the field. Then you could banish a Rosenix, summon a token onto the field that is level one. Then you could have a Citri. So level two tuner, level six tuner, plus a level one non-tuner. That's gonna make the Quarion. And you get to draw when the Coral Dragon is sent to the grave. Or the Coral Dragon in the token could make a Samurai Destroyer, which is great for negating on the attack. You also draw a card with the Coral Dragon. Or you could make a Black Rose Dragon with this play. Very quickly, let's talk about Sea Stealth Attack. This is why you would be playing the Mythic Depths version. This will make it so your level five or higher waters will destroy any monster at the start of the damage step. And also whenever you want, you could banish your water until the end phase. It does not need to be level five. So with the Coral Dragon Embryonic, that could be a decent turn one play if you open up your Sea Stealth Attack, playing the triple Sea Stealth Attack version. And a cool little play here also is you could activate Citri to summon Sulfonir to synchro into a Sam D during your opponent's turn but in response to the Citri activation, you could activate the Sea Stealth Attack, banishing the Citri. So now the Sulfonir is not going to get banished. It's not gonna be used as a Synchro, and it will have the benefits of the Sea Stealth Attack. Then Citri comes back in the end phase. You could go from there. Maybe you wanna Black Rose the field or just be happy that you have a field like this. And in addition to just myself playing triple three Sea Stealth Attack, Whale, 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 Whale. Tribute two waters to summon the whale, and then it searches your sea stealth attack and plays it into your back row, so that's a great way to search it. And guess what searches this? 
your undine. Undine could send any water, but you send the whale. You could summon the whale if you have two waters on the field. That is nuts. If you could ever, in a situation, have whale on the field plus a citri on the field, that is insane. And you're normally going to do so by popping the Umi with something like a Smiger or something else. Pop the Umi to summon a the Citri. Then you'll tribute with the Whale over your Undyne and the other monster to make the Whale. Then you have this. You flip it up. It plays the Umi. And then with the level 3 in the graveyard, you, could, you have the Whale. Negate any card effect that targets a Crystron monster or any of your water monsters. See stealth attack, destroying at the start of the damage step, banishing until the end phase whenever you want, and synchroing into an Amatrix during your opponent's turn. That is insane. That's a big part why the deck is insane. But sometimes it's just about keeping it simple. So a very simple way to make lethal plays. You do want to focus on this. A lot of people skip over this. They think they got to make the Quarion. They got to make big plays all the time. Sometimes it's as simple as make a Bryonic, Discard any number of cards from your hands of the graveyard. For example, you discard a Thisfern, maybe even a Turtle. Then, alongside the Bryonic, normal summon the Rosenix, which you could search with the Thisfern, or banish your Turtle to special summon from the hand. This is a very common lethal play that you'll be winning many games with. So as you can see, the deck very easily performs lethal, wipes the field, banish the field and or grave, absolute unstoppable protection put everything into defense set that defense to zero destroy it at the start of the damage set negate targeting effects the deck does too much konami you really need to nerf this that's why this is the best deck enjoy the gameplay now by the fact that we have the sulfonir and the smiger that enough is pretty freaking close to ideal that is super duper ideal getting a smiger in the graveyard because that sets up all of our plays. My now, I'm gonna summon a turtle. We do want a level three in the graveyard still, which will be the Scrapper Cycler. Perfect. Smiger Banish, grab an impact. The feel when still a beginner, just pay attention, my friend. I want you to understand that even if you don't have access to the cards I'm playing, that the gameplay is still relevant to you. Okay? That you could still learn with toggles. And especially if I'm playing a relevant deck, if I'm beating people or losing, you're going to learn how to play against the deck. That's incredibly important. I'm going to wait with the Thisfern, since we already have a Banished Smiger. This could be controversial because it gives up the ability to double this fern. So you know what? I'll just do it anyway. I think both plays are good to wait on the this fern for a different option of a play versus banishing so we could use the effect twice. So now we get a second search next turn, possibly. Toggle on, check for a delay. Nothing, he's got no quick play. Gradle Impact. Okay. Any plans to restart Car Curry? Maybe. Gradle Slime Jr. It's gonna make the Gradle Dragon, huh? Gradle Dragon, which targets on the destruction. It will not just destroy like a Sun Saga. Pretty cool. This, I believe, is the best Exceed deck. Juicy Joint, baby for me, baby for you. Love the content, my guy, every single week, bro. Thank you for the 18 months, six months away from ascending. Quiet Edgar with 100 bits, thank you so much. The Pacer with a free prime sub, let's get to it. Popping two cards in the field. So, I'm going to impact, then Citri. If you Citri, then impact, then you're a fool because you blocked your Citri. And that's totally not Q. So, impact. I you right in my net. I for the Thisfern. Then, chain the Citri. Because you need room. You need the room to summon with the Citri. So we summon with the Citri. The then we Synchro Shokan. Okay. 
okay? Then we summon the Banished Monster, which was the first thing we activate. The first thing you activate is the last thing that resolves. Does that make sense? Zero D. Otherwise, it would have been at 2KD. 2200D, thanks to the Umi. Gradle Impact. Wow. That's interesting. Taking out the Amatrix. His effect activates. Our effect can activate. I could just pass on it because he it's honestly just blocking our plays. It blocks us from making a potential Black Rose or something cool. So you know what? I'll just say no. I don't think he's going anywhere with this. this will work. I Destiny OST Flame On, Angry Beard. Is this a flame on moment? Focus. We have Rion in the deck. Very good. I could make a play. So this is where you want to think if you want to be summoning. What do you want to summon? Destroy the Sulfonir. Sulfonir. Now, the Great Slime Jr. is only if destroyed by battle. By battle, does it get the effect to summon from the deck? So we get destroyed by card effect. Treacherous! Well, I'm pretty sure we have a card in the grave that says no. Pretty sure. Pretty sure it just says no. Yeah, that's the card. No! That's a big no. No. Come forth. Coral Dragon. I'll teach you to stay out of the waters. I synchro summon a Could just simply get poppin'. And you know what? I could just normal summon something that's large. I could even just to show you the play. I'm not saying to do this. Rosenix with the Coral Dragon is crazy because we can make a Black Rose or a Sam D. You also get to draw. Like, what? How's that okay? That's not okay. That's freaking broken. Get drawing. Oh, my freaking Undyne. What? 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 What the? Wow, this just became really broken. This is disgusting broken. This is nuts. We'll negate any card effect that targets. We'll have a Citri on the field with the effect of the turtle. We have a C stealth attack destroying anything at the start of the damage step. We could use the Citri by banishing the whale on his turn. This is insane. And I was just going to search with this fern and summon. What the heck? Why is this a deck? This should not be a deck. This is totally imbalanced. Well, it's the best deck. Thank you, Konami. Now nerf it. Well, 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 what do we have here? Whale can negate the Dark Magical Circle by being targeted and not being chain link blocked, which he does not have the opportunity to chain link block. In the draw phase, we could check if he has an active navigation. Ready? He very likely does because he has the hourglass flickering within our draw phase. So we want to make plays around it. Let's make the plays. Sulfonir. Discard it this fern. I'll show you no mercy. No mercy. Pop the Sulfonir. Sulfonir activates. And with the Sulfonir, I think we'll summon a turtle. Turtle, turtle. Get turtling. Does not want to activate his circle yet. That's fine. Turtle, pop the Umi. This says that if exactly one monster would be targeted, you can negate the effect and destroy. Let's go. Whale. 
Whale Whale. What do we have here? We have a Dark Magical Circle Negate. Not looking good for you. That's not going to save you. We'll summon two monsters. Then Whale will hit the fields. Then he'll activate Circle. Then the Whale will negate and destroy the Circle. Let's go. Yugi be like Keck, wait. Not yet. Soon. Soon the big Keck wait is coming. Give me a double cutscene, boy. Come on, give me that other Dark Magician. Show me the double cutscene. Let's go. Oh, okay. Focus. You fool! You're easy prey for my cards. Your chance. No chance. Oh my, not looking good for you. Now his navigation could negate the sea stealth attack, but little does he know I got double. Double trouble. This burn. Let's get banishing. Now, what we could do is we could simply normal summon a Citri, or I think it'd be best to... We'll just grab a Rosenix for now. We're gonna summon the Smiger, Smiger pop itself. Summon a Citri from the deck. Let's go. Let's get going. Pop it. Summon the Citri. His back row's not activatable. Toggle on. Nothing to battle into. Double SSA. Check for the quick play. He's got nothing. SSA. Will he negate with navigation? As you can see, now the hourglass is on because it's his navigation. Now, since he will be negating the effect and not the activation, which he chose to not do, the sea stealth attack would stay on the field. Umi, umi. Now, the cost of the sea stealth attack is what's so good. It will banish as a cost, not the effect. So even if he attempts to negate, it will be useless. Focus. Focus, focus, focus. Thank you so much for that music. You set, you're a fool. Let's battle. Let's battle. Go, dark magician. Go, you fool. We can activate the Citri. Summoning the Sulfoneer. Chaining the Sea Stealth Attack to banish the Citri. My continuous trap activates. I will summon the Sulfoneer. Oh, you're negating nothing. Nice negate. It's still coming back. What exactly did he negate? He negated the effect to protect my Umi and the Sea Stealth Attack. Now that it's negated, he will think that he could swing in. Toggle on, check for a card. He has nothing activatable. Surprise! No take sees, back sees. Pop the Dark Magician. Let's go. Double SSA, double activate. One's negated though. Not the other. About to end your turn. About. Oh, oh my. Oh, oh my. Oh, oh, oh my. Smiger get banishing. Karma cut! You fool! That's a negate! Negate! Not today! Grab the impact. Oh, and that is a scooparoo. Nothing he could do. We could even black row set up the impact. I believe we could possibly even have lethal that turn. You what, mate? That's insane. With the Rosenix in the hand, we could use the Rosenix to summon, and then we could make a token, pop the token. We could make an Amatrix. We could then perform another normal summon. 
all my cheeses, give them the nice, 